Steve Rogers contacts his supreme leader with news about what happened in Megalia. In spite of Dr. Selvig's pleas, it was no difficulty to take down both him and Zemo. However, there was a complication. Free Spirit and S.H.I.E.L.D. discovered Jack Flag. Sharon Carter immediately wanted to go in and rescue the young hero, but things weren't so simple. Megalia is a city controlled and populated by supervillains. Landing a S.H.I.E.L.D. vessel in the middle of the city uh, would not end well. But things weren't looking good. Jack wasn't breathing, and some of the villains were starting to notice their presence. So, with no other choice, Sharon went in. This got everybody's attention, and pretty soon, they were greeted by the local sheriff, Taskmaster. Now, he saw a number of crimes being committed, in particular invasion of sovereign territory, and, well, he's got a trip advisory rating to protect, so... Taskmaster mocked Steve, not surprised to find him in the mix. Though he's gotta say, that new shield? That thing does not look aerodynamic at- DON'T EVER TOUCH HER AGAIN! On the second thought, Taskmaster is coming around to the whole new shield thing. At this, Begalia went into a state of martial law, and Cap and his crew knew they had to get out of there fast. However, they quickly found themselves sworn. Thinking quickly on his feet, Rick Jones announced to the mob that, as a man who just hacked and publicly humiliated S.H.I.E.L.D. only two weeks ago, in five minutes he would empty the bank accounts of every casino in the city. If they had any chips or money stored there, the villains would have to move fast or lose everything. This plan worked perfectly, and the heroes regrouped and got ready to go home. As Cap comforted Free Spirit over the loss of Jack, the paramedics on scene made a surprising announcement. He has a pulse. In the present, this news shocks and outrages the Red Skull, seeing this as utter failure on behalf of his servant. He scolds Rogers and points out the man is still soft. They are so close to victory, they can't lose control now. He has to kill Jack Flag. They can't risk anything. Steve knows the this. He understands the danger. He knows he probably isn't going to live through all this, but he has to try. However, as he approaches Dr. Selvig, he wonders if he has to do it alone. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Captain America Steve Rogers number 3. So I've been getting this series a fair amount of praise so far. This is the first issue where my feelings are a bit more mixed though. It is refreshing though, a lot of the political nonsense has died down, so for this review we get to mostly focus on the merits of the actual comic itself, instead of what Twitter thinks. Hooray! On the positive side, the art is, as always, really great. Jesus Says has been doing a really great job at both facial expressions and actions. The looks on the characters' faces always convey exactly what they're supposed to, and the action is clean, polished, and easy to follow. The entire sequence in Begalia was also great. Like the comic itself acknowledges, it's basically Black Hawk down with superpowers, and it just worked so well. The setting was different, and the idea of it led to a lot of tension very quickly, along with some great cameos. And Cap had a great moment just losing it on Taskmaster, showing just how different the Steve Rogers might really be. That's where the comic flourishes, but also where my praise ends. The stuff with the Red Skull and such, that wasn't as strong as the rest of the series has been. I found it confusing as I did unremarkable. A lot of it was more of the same, the Red Skull going on about his big important plans while a whole bunch of other exposition happens, but like I said, it's all been said at this point. They're falling into that trap of telling what's going to happen and not showing, and rather they just get on with things. But I understand it is just simple build-up. There are more twists and turns on the way, and we're setting up for something, uh, more. I'm sorry if that sounds vague, but I really have no idea where exactly they're going with this. That last page really changes things on its head. Is Steve not really loyal to the Red Skull? I have no idea at this point, but I am interested to find out. And coupled with the fact that next issue officially brings this series into Civil War II territory, I'm eager to see what happens next. That's called suspense, and in spite of my problems with this comic, it's a pretty good sign. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics. <laughs>